Welcome to the Reddit stories. R slash ask Reddit. What dark secret are you hiding from everyone? When I was a teenager, I worked at a novelty tourist shop near me. Being the idiot that I was, I stole a wad of cash from the store. It was $100 in ones. I told nobody, but they knew it was missing. Right about the same time, a co-worker who was always trying to get me fired, was telling someone she got about $100 in tips from her other job. They ended up firing her, because they didn't trust that it wasn't her. Not super dark but mine is also stealing from my employer. It was a seasonal job, and they told people, if you came back next season you get a raise. Next season I got a 50 cent per hour raise, and mentioned it to a couple other people who had also returned, who it turned out didn't get a raise. They went and complained to the boss, who then took my raise back, and gave them each 25 cent raises. I argued with the boss for a bit but eventually just decided I'd steal a few bucks per shift, to make up the difference. I had an IBS attack once, and had to violently shit in a church grounds behind someone's car, used underwear to wipe to, and left that there. Not proud. IBS attack once. I had one in high school. I managed to clean any trace, and nobody found out. Nobody knew, except my father who was unusually helpful, understood me, and supported me and never talked about it again. It was my darkest secret half of my life, but then I understood that it's natural, and that I took the good decisions and I have nothing to be shamefully about. And also, I have way darker secrets now. When I was younger I lived with my grandmother. Not long after I turned 18 her health started to decline, that sort of decline, that you know means she won't be around for much longer. Over the months I did my best to take care of her, getting her to the hospital when she needed, and other things. We had someone coming every day, to help her with things I couldn't. Well what my family doesn't know, is that the night she passed, I was in the living room watching TV. My dog was in bed with my grandma, and I started to hear him whimper, and bark. I knew what was happening, I knew that, if I acted I could potentially save her. I didn't want to watch her suffer anymore though, to watch her live with so much pain and unable to do anything for herself anymore. So I made the choice to let her pass, before making any calls. She lived 92 years, and the only regret I have, is that she passed a month, after I would have graduated, if I hadn't been kicked out of school. She had been in good enough health at the time, to go to my graduation. I still kick myself for how stupid I was back then. Edit, I'm not too torn up about letting her pass, I knew it was for the best. She was such a great person, she didn't deserve to live in such a poor manner any longer than she already had. I don't regret what I did, I regret what I had done that got me kicked out of school, that I didn't try and make it to graduation for her. I think I've lived my life so far in a way, that she'd be proud of. Not graduating before she passed, is the only regret I really have in this life so far, and I'm 35 now. So I think I'm doing pretty good. I found my adoption papers a few years ago, when I was looking for a copy of my birth certificate. I know my birth mom I just never had a relationship with her. My maternal grandmother took me in in 2002, I never knew she adopted me, I just knew that one day I ended up living with her, after telling her one day I don't want to go back home lol. I also found the letter that my mom wrote as to why she was giving me up. That one really hurt. I can't imagine the pain of what lead to those circumstances, but man. Thinking about your grandma hearing you say you didn't want to go home, and that was that, no more questions asked. She went through all the legal work, and it wasn't even a thing in your adolescence I hope she was as good to you as it sounds, because she sounds like an angel. I was molested on a cruise ship by an employee, when I was 8 happened about 30 years ago. I'm very sorry, that that happened to you. I went on a Disney cruise several times growing up, and thought about how weird it was that kids just ran around anywhere on the ship with no supervision or protection. It's a perfect storm for this kind of thing to happen. My PTSD isn't getting better. I have nightly nightmares of the industrial accident I was in. I see my co-worker ripping his burnt face off every night. I no longer scream in my sleep because of it. I'm no longer terrified as much by it. Even though I know it's not my fault I feel an enormous amount of guilt for what happened to him. Sometimes when I'm not sleeping I'll hear the scream he made in the distance and it'll make my blood feel like ice. Therapy hasn't done much. I pulled out in front of someone at a busy intersection. 
my car was barely bumped, and I got out, and expecting to see a fender bender, but she was texting and driving, and never hit the brakes. I looked over to find her SUV spinning on its hood like a top. She had to be pulled out of the car, and was bloody, and injured and screaming for her child. They searched her car and there was only an empty car seat. The kid wasn't with her that day. I understand we both share a fault in what happened, and it was just a terrible accident, but I will never get those screams out of my mind. I have the dreams too. I don't have an answer for you or even myself, but I know the pain you are in, and I hope someday we can move past these terrible terrible moments in our lives. Please DM me if you want to talk. Not a huge secret in comparison to some of these answers, but I feel the guilt of it often. After my fiancé passed, I napped all the time for over a year. My aunt was calling me one day and I just denied her call, went back to napping. It was my aunt calling because my grandma, who was very sick with cancer, wanted to say happy birthday a day before my birthday. Grandma died the next day. I should have picked up the damn phone. She still loved you, and just wants you to be happy. It's okay to not be okay, and sometimes we miss important things for that reason. That I didn't graduate from college. I failed one course my senior year, second semester. The ceremony was already set up, so they let everyone walk. I had no diploma in my award, nobody knows to this day and it's been 17 years. Failed one course, 3 credits. Was ashamed so I never went back for those 3 credits. So everyone believes I graduated. It's strange, even if I google myself, I show up as an alumni. Like WTF. Not complaining but I would have imaging the institutions of higher learning, would ensure their shit was right. And this was a private school. Ironically this hasn't blown up in my face, and I don't put that I graduated on my resume. What I put is, pursued a degree in, splitting hair censure, but not lying. Just allows for the receipt, through then use of carefully crafted words, to read it as written. Never had a question about the word pursue. The only job that I've had, since college that actually verified anything regarding my attendance, they had a hard duck in time cause my student loans defaulted. So acquiring my transcript was near impossible. The university would only verify I attended, and that was it. Haha <laughs> I'm such a rock. Not as though I didn't go through the whole 4 years. I did, and don't even have the arcing paper to show for it. Let the lies continue. It's heartbreaking hearing of so many people who were sexually assaulted as children and feeling like they have no option but to hide it lest it cause irreparable rifts between friends, family, and other close ones. Just want to let all of you affected by this know that if you did go public, you're not the cause of any conflict, no matter how anybody else paints it. You were the victim of one of the most heinous things one human being can do to another. The source of conflict is all down to whoever perpetrated the violence against you, and the shame should not be yours to live with. My brother and I did a 23 and me. We discovered we have a half sibling, same father, who is older than us. I messaged them but no reply. Since the half sibling is older, it was during my father's military career, which was short lived, because he got a dishonorable discharge, that he hides from his family still. Kind of similar story here. Six years ago, when I was 24 my mom randomly told me I have an older half-sister that my dad completely abandoned. She only knew of my sister's mother's name, so I searched for her on Facebook and found my sister. She is the spitting image of our father, so I knew immediately it was true. Both my sister and her mom confirmed it, and my sister and I immediately started bonding. We are incredibly close now. My father's side was overjoyed when I found her, as they knew of her, but never what happened to her. We've welcomed her with open arms, except my father. When she reached out to him, he essentially told her to walk off, then screamed at me that she wasn't my sister, and continues to call me the bitch that ruined the family. Her and I did 23 and me, and we matched as half-siblings, so now there's no denying it. I lost a shitty father, but gained an incredible sibling, that means 10x more to me. I was married for 13 years to my best friend. We had what I thought was a great, easy marriage. One day our 5 year old daughter told me he was having her perform more or less X on him. I was shocked, devastated and afraid. He was one of those fun guys everyone loves to be around. I immediately called the police, and he was arrest. 
when they started investigating him, they found out that he had been arrested while in college for exposing himself to very young boys. He only got a slap on the wrist that time because he came from a very wealthy family. One of his uncles was governor of the state we lived in. I was so ashamed I told our friends that he had an affair and moved away. But the truth was that he was in prison for 5 years. I picked up the pieces, sent our daughter to therapy, and spent the next 15 years being a mother, paying for private school, cool trips, etc. She was my life. Then when she went to college he reached out to her over Facebook. When I saw she was communicating with him I was shocked, devastated and afraid all over again. I called and told her that she was an adult, but I thought she should be careful because he's not safe. She hung up on me and has not spoken to me since. That was 4 years ago. I sent her $40,000 a year still to pay for her medical school. It's all been almost unbelievable. Thank you for allowing me to share it here. When I was around 5 or 6, my mom and dad were fighting just about every day. While I was napping on the couch, when my mom came in very upset, and she shook me awake. She asked me if I saw the girl my dad brought home. I've always felt terrible for this BC I hadn't seen anyone but my dad that whole day. I'm pretty sure he was just playing video games like usual, but for some reason in my sleepy kid brain I answered yes. I said she was with him in their room. I'm honestly not sure why I lied like that, but they got a divorce shortly after, and I always felt like it was my fault. Until I recently found out my little sister is actually my half-sister but that's a whole other story. Edit. For clarification my dad had been cheating with my mom's sister and my mom was cheating with one of their friends to get back at him. She thought he was cheating with a different girl, but found out later it was my aunt. Honestly their relationship was on its way out. I don't feel bad about it now, since a few years ago we found out my little sister is my half sister from the affair my mom had. My cousin raped me when I was a kid, and to this day I haven't told anyone about it. It's been probably around 25 years ago or so which makes me feel like it's not worth addressing after so much time. I absolutely hated it when his mom asked me why I didn't invite him to my wedding. I still don't know how I should have responded to keep that a secret. My mom was molested by her parents cult leader when she was a preteen. In her 30s she went to court and sent him to jail. It's never too late to speak up about being raped. Everyone in my family is bragging me with the fact that I don't want to date girls anymore and think that I'm strange or gay. But I lost my girlfriend which I assume I could have a good life with her. She committed suicide and I never talk about that with them. I know I can speak with some members of my family, but my parents are different. If your family know about your dead girlfriend and still make fun of you, then they are just a bunch of cunts. I've been accessory to both my parents' infidelity. At age 5 my mother cheated on my dad while he was deployed, and my brother told me what was happening and that I shouldn't tell anyone. My father slept with his secretary two years later for a few years, and would even bring me on dates with her telling my mother we were going to the movies. He took me to her house, and had her room at watch me, while they went out or just hung out in her room. They are still married I don't know, if either know the other did the thing, or if they still, are doing the thing. Edit, to everyone saying maybe they're in an open or poly relationship, sure maybe they are, but I doubt it considering their views on most everything. Also if they were in one then they should have explained it to us instead of sneaking around and telling us not to tell the other parent and maybe don't bring your kid on your house dates. So yeah maybe they were, but if they were then mo their behavior goes from shitty for involving their kids and their infidelity to shitty, that they involved their kids in a lifestyle without explaining it to them and making their kids think that they were cheating on each other. Thank you.